Hello, this is Up to Snuff, and today we have Kaina of the Great Snow Sea. I am very excited to talk about this one. I'm literally just seeing right now that they changed the name of the movie. Yes, this is getting a movie. The ratings are not good, but it still is getting a movie. And the setup for the movie was pretty much forced in the last episode. But let's get into this. So, Atland and Valgia are two nations waging war with one another because there's a lack of water. Also, there's a snow sea and a few trees coming out of there. At the top of those trees is what's called the canopy, where Kaina lives. Yes, the main guy. And he lives with a lost civilization. There are very few people there. The protagonist, the girl, Riraha, accidentally goes to the canopy. Kaina's goal is to take her back down to the snow sea. And the rest of the story, which is basically the last nine episodes, are all about them trying to stop the war. It's really hard to fluidly talk about this show. The characters are really not that great. Sometimes they just make the stupidest mistakes. All right, this is one mistake that I just cannot get around. So in the end, they're obviously they're at war, and there is a way to end the war. There's a possible way to end the war, and that's by fixing the water problem that they've been having around the entire world. Now, there is a map of possibly how to fix it and stuff, but that gets burned because the princess tries to save one person's life, but because they were uh, trapped from carbon monoxide poisoning, they could have died very soon. But they threw the map on this person as if that would save them. They didn't even need to do that to save them, yet they did. And that's why that was not an option for ending the war. Now, how did they even end the war? All that happened was they used an item that hasn't been talked about since the very beginning. They use it. They didn't even realize it was that powerful. Not even the viewer realized it was that powerful. And that's how they took down the enemy. The execution was done really poorly. The concept of CGI, I'm not going to get mad at it. It's obviously fine. The panoramic shots, though, were definitely really good, especially more in the beginning. I definitely could tell that they were trying to rope you in with that one. But there were many more problems that occurred. There was very minimal growth between the characters throughout the entire series. And without growth, I mean, they were really relying on the plot, the war, to be enticing. And, you know, to a degree, it was something worthwhile. But there were many problems that weren't explained. I mean, there was a really cool mushroom that I wish I could have talked about, but I had no clue what it even is because it wasn't explained in the story. They tried to set up how to ration the water supply or get more water, but that's going to be for the movie, which they're going to have in the fall. I was one of very few people who actually watched this, and I'm not going to say it was the worst thing I've ever watched. If I had to really explain, this is not as bad as Spy Classroom. There was actually a lot more action, which I did like. The designs were much better. So this is not that that bad, but it still was not great. Now, to get to a final rating, I'm going to still have to give this an F. But I will say, it's not as bad as Spy Classroom. Seriously. When I was looking at this, I was seeing some promise. I was seeing some, even some uh, To Your Eternity vibes. I was thinking, you know, maybe, maybe this was going to be something good. But I'm done with talking about this show because there were a lot of things that were wrong. Very few things that were right. I think an F still is deserving of this show. And I'll see you next time. For the, actually, I'll see you for the movie.